everyone. I'm Heather. <coughs> and I have had a day. Let me tell you, sister. I had to go to work today in the office, which in itself is disgusting, but also it is pouring rain. So I'm drenched. So I had to cycle in it. We had actual lightning and thunder, which we never have. It scared the shit out of my dog and pissed me right off. Like, how dare you scare my dog? He's done nothing to you. I'm in the middle of my great January quest to finish all of my library books that have been sitting in my library books box silently judging me for several months. Um, also, I'm in the middle of several mini quests, mainly to do with other various New Year's resolutions. One of them being to establish zining as a hobby like creating zines. Um, there is a bookstore near me that sort of sells quite a lot of zines. So the first step for that is to go there to investigate the zine scene. The scene of zines, if you will. Um, and once you sort of like had a look at them, blah, 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 we could potentially create our own, me and Anwen, or just me, whatever. Like she is more creative than me, so it would be good to have her input. Anyway, on the library book front, Okay, I have whittled away another one. Are you ready? Like, I shouldn't be so smug about this. Like, I feel like my last vlog about January was super smug. Like, I am on fire and I am doing this so well. And I feel now like it's giving me anxiety. Like, I'm waiting for the universe to smite me like I deserve. Do you know what I mean? So I'll be sort of more humble. I'll be like, I have been given the gift of the ability to finish another one. Hopefully I can do more this month as well. I have finished The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, um, which was banging. Okay, so good. I love the writing. I love the characters. Um, however, it was hella grim, super grim, super like um, focused on like misogyny just in normal life but throughout the ages you know uh, sort of like violence toward women and all focusing on one particular spot in Scotland where all of these women who have experienced this horrendousness all look out onto the same sort of like rock formation in the sea um which sort of just sort of highlights like how much like violence against women and sort of like you know like misogynistic bullshit goes on just in like one community over time you know like let alone just the world over but basically you've got these three main characters each in a different time period and sort of relatively related to each other um first time period i think it's like 18th century it's a girl who's been accused of being a witch but it becomes clear that the reason she's accused of being a witch by all these various people and hated by all these men um, is because she's pretty and um, gives them attention and lures them into loving her, but she doesn't love them back. How fucking dare she? Um, <clears throat> and then a woman in the 40s um, whose husband is awful to her, treats her like shit. And um, gaslights her which is the most infuriating thing I find. Like, it's just clearly, like, challenging her whole reality to the point where she feels she could be institutionalized for her inability to grasp reality. Um, and then her sort of grand niece or something, sort of someone um, related to her in a sort of way, uh, who then inherits the house after her and who's having a bit of a train wreck life um, due to various relationships with men and with her family and whose sister is also going through a sort of traumatic divorce with a hideous sort of guy and it jumps around a lot sort of between them like first this person tells a bit and then this person tells a bit and then this person tells a bit and it's sort of interspersed in between with like little little vignettes of sort of uh violence against women like this girl was murdered and stuck in a suitcase oh this girl is has to leave her house with just a suitcase full of all her stuff and her kids one teddy bear because her husband is awful you know like just sort of little little snippets if you will like this book is great I think four stars maybe five stars I think four stars like it's good and I really enjoyed it but January is not the time I think for me to have such a grim 
sort of book, a grim sort of story, to focus on that kind of stuff. I think last January I committed to just nothing but graphic novels for children. Like, like that's the kind of zone I'm in for January. Like, I just need something that's going to help me get up in the morning and continue to live my life. Um, so grim book after grim book after grim book is starting to, like, take its toll. Um, it's so dark outside. It's so cold. It's so wet. Like, I can't. But I realized as well, I may love this author. Like, I thought this was the first book that I've read by her, but I read this other one. It was a graphic novel called, like, Everything is Teeth or something. Just this random bullshit, like, graphic novel I got from the library randomly in the summer when I was, like, on this kick of reading random graphic novels. Um, and she wrote that one, and it was really good. Like, when I was going through Goodreads or whatever, looking for her things, I saw that. I was like, oh, that was brilliant as well. So she's got another one. I can't remember the name but I think I might put it on my list to read because as an author like Evie Wilde like I enjoy her I enjoy her writing um anyway I'm moving on now to Women Talking by Miriam Taves I believe that looks like toes but I also have the audiobook from the library which I got last minute and I think I'm going to listen to the audiobook instead and on the audiobook they informed me that this is not Miriam Toes like I've been saying loads but Taves. Um, also, I am on page four of The Wheel of Doll by Jonathan Ames. I started this one ages ago, but keep sort of leaving it places and then find myself in need of a book and jumping to other things. So, these are on the go at the minute. Watch this space. Oh, I'm, I'm filming it myself. Like, I think I'm just gonna get these zines online. Like, I didn't want to get them online because I wanted to have a browse, you know, go in the shop, open them up, you know, get a feel for them. I feel like I can't get like a good enough feel for them just with like a title and a cover, do you know what I mean? So I didn't want to buy them online. But it, like I'm done now. I cycled like a half an hour to get to the store in the rain and it's closed. <laughs> I'm like, it's always raining or something. It's been January in Wales. Like I, it's hard to get there. I finally had the perfect opportunity. And I fucked it. Like, I looked on the store's Instagram to sort of check it. I was like, I could sworn they were open backing, or opening back up on the 12th. Um, and it says opening back up on Friday the 12th. It says Thursday the 12th. There's no Friday the 12th. She clearly meant to say Friday the 13th. And I didn't catch it. Like, I just fucked it. So, that's on me. That's my fault. I think I'm just going to get these things online. <laughs> it's over. I'm done. I have other stuff to do, like Welsh homework. <laughs> okay, so I think I've ordered some really good zines online. I had to do it through Etsy in the end, which is annoying, um, but the place I wanted to go, like lots of their stuff was out of stock for like their online stock, but sort of falling down a rabbit hole, going through all the ones I want to buy or whatever. Now I've got like the creative juices flowing, like I'm gonna wait until they get here and I can like look at them properly, you know, and like have like a feel of them. Like, I've already got some, like, rough ideas, right, for a zine. So, I think, generally, like, what zines are is just basically my normal journal. Like, this is just how I journal anyway. So, like, this is, like, the 31st of December, the 30th of December. That's me and Anwen making that journal entry, right? The next journal entry is, like, that. Do you know what I mean? Like, sort of random bits. Um, and the next one is, is like, that. Do you know what I mean? Like... I think just my normal life journaling would work for zines anyway, but I'm going to sort of narrow it down, like bring it to a focus, have each one about something specific, right? So my ideas, an ode to my adopted home, right? So I'm always sort of like whenever anyone comes to visit me, I'm always like making them go to all these places in Cardiff or like around Cardiff, like South Wales, because I think it's game brilliant i'm in love with it it's amazing like castles and places to eat and like foresty bits and there's just a shit ton of stuff in cardiff and around cardiff that is cool as balls and um 
I think I could do like a zine to do with it, you know, like bits of photo mash and like um like drawings and like little funny sort of things or whatever. Um like like funny history bits and like a sort of itinerary where you could like I don't know, come as a tourist and then like go through each of the bits, like each of the places and then like read like the blurb. I don't know. Anyway, okay. Next thing. Things I think about when my daughter's sleeping. Like sometimes um, if I'm lying in bed with her because she can't sleep or whatever and then she falls asleep and it's like, you know, midnight or whatever and I'm looking over and I can like see her and I'm just like watching her sleep like a super creepoid, you know, things that you think like you have all these like big thoughts about motherhood and life and, you know, uh, future and possibility and all this stuff like at like one in the morning, you know, like slightly drunk on like weird sherry, just like watching your kids sleep. So that's like another one I could do with like, um, I don't know, like bits of pictures, but like that one could be like black and white maybe, but like with like a black background with like white over top. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like night. Anyway, okay. Last one is one I think Anne Wen could do, um, with a bit of help obviously, because she's only little and she, her mind wanders. Um, but greyhounds make awful pets, okay? Because obviously greyhounds don't make awful pets. They're like the best pets. But nobody really knows that. And there's greyhounds all over the Epping place that are leaving the track, you know, being thrown off by people who've used them up and they're only three years old and they've got all these problems and they've never lived in a house with a family before and have to learn how to use stairs. Like, it's disgusting. There's a million greyhounds that need families and they're just like little, like, loving, like, gracious, like, little cats. But they're massive. They're huge and all they want to do is snuggle with you and love you for giving them like the home they've always wanted. Like I don't even want to get into it. Okay. But she could do like a little zine about her greyhounds, like her little doggies. Um, and it could be like in a way of like all oh, greyhounds make awful pets, you know, but like, you know, tongue in cheek, like actually they're brilliant. They're amazing pets. Um, I don't know. These are just like ideas like I feel like I'm full of them now just like going through all these zines people have made and like put on the internet they're like three pound these tiny things that just look like my journal they cost three pound like we could sell them like I mean I don't think I'd have the confidence to sell them honestly but ugh, this is a great this is great I'm into this now We're talking to the bartender who's super interesting and funny and from Ireland and we're like talking about like music and stuff but guess who didn't do their Welsh homework? Fuck. Okay, I have finished women talking um, and I think three stars? I think I'm gonna go with three stars and mainly because I'm in love with the concept of this book like the idea of what this book is and like what it is like attempting to accomplish I'm in love with but the actual execution of that concept I think was quite boring and I don't know if it's just me or what but sort of the sort of idea is is this guy um he is part of this Mennonite colony and he is um, doing the minutes or sort of like recording the minutes of a meeting happening between women in his Mennonite colony and it's based on this actual thing that happened which is fucking horrific so in like Bolivia or like somewhere sort of like that I mean like I think it was Bolivia um this Mennonite colony um had this uh, sort of like incident thing where the men were beating, knocking unconscious, and raping these women in their colony. Um, and then saying afterwards that it was like demons, or like the devil, you know, was like doing it to them because they were sinners or whatever, and like they deserved this because they're bad or whatever. And then um, one of the women actually found the man in her room and was like, that's an actual man, I know who that man is. And then it sort of broke, and then we found out that it's actually these men that are doing it. Um, <clears throat> and they ended up in jail because some of, like, the, the people in the colony were worried that the women would kill them. So for their own safety, they, like, sent them to jail. Anyway, from that factual thing, it carries on then into this fictional situation 
where the women are now having a meeting like the men have all gone off to get the bad men from prison and to bring them back and the women are now trying to decide what they're going to do they're like should we leave should we stay like there are like three options there's the stay and do nothing there's the stay and fight back and then there's the leave option and they're trying to figure out among them like what they're going to do and the idea of it i think is that these women are trying to engage like thinking muscles that haven't been allowed to be engaged do you know what i mean like you'd think thinking just sort of comes naturally or whatever but they do say like in school don't they loads like that critical thinking um and sort of problem solving and you know investigative you know problem solving skills and things like that are things that you have to sort of learn they're not innate to sort of just think normally blah blah whatever fine but to take things apart in your mind and to examine things deeply and sort of the ramifications of that and like rational and logical sort of like conclusions from there is like a skill that you have to learn and they obviously were never allowed to have that they can't even read they can't write they've been giving really no schooling at all and in this meeting with each other they're sort of flexing those muscles for the first time so i think it's like this sort of beautiful thing and like it does sort of uh, sort of go in a really good pattern it sort of like unfolds really well with good timing like i don't know i did think that the idea of it was brilliant but just in pure execution like trying to like read the book and then also listen to the audiobook at some points i just was like sleeping like it's just a bunch of women talking in a circle <laughs> like i can do that at home I don't know and like the things that I would say randomly to my mates and like things they would say to me are way more interesting than things that these women had to say I think um but anyway I basically raced through the very end of it unfortunately through audiobook because I wanted to move on to spare <laughs> so that's my next one <laughs> working through the two books that I was working through when I left for London because I entered a time hole in London where very little reading actually happened. However, I have mail to share. Right, first thing is I ordered like four zines, okay, from the internet, random place on the internet, mainly Etsy, okay, to sort of get a feel for what's on Etsy. Two of them have come. So the first one is how to make your own zines, okay, and I really like the feel of this one, I like the whole colour, I like how it's put together, I like the paper they use, I like all the layout and everything, so it's going to be really informative for me, because it has actual information I want, um, but also, I might try to sort of emulate this type of idea, like not copy it, obviously, because I'm not a weirdo, but like, you know, just how clearly laid out and how like eye-catching it is, and like, how they've made it, like they've done the staple, like, okay, basically loving that it also came with like this cute little sort of thing right with my name on and a little sticker this is zines forever which is something spud and i could do we could put little stickers in ours like i was doing um 
interviews like for students for like candidates um in work yesterday and um I was like taking notes or whatever like I had my pad I would just take notes and um it ended up being quite straightforward like most of the ones like there wasn't a lot that I needed to actually note down so I used my paper instead for doodles and I doodled like this girl in like big shoes or whatever and I sort of just posted it um and I got a comment back that said this this we should put in your zines I didn't even think about that but obviously that's brilliant. I should put that in my zines. Like we should do little doodles like that. Because the Spud and I are obsessed with Inktober as well. Just awful, hideous, completely amateur margin doodles. Do you know what I mean? And like they could just go, you know, in here. Like, um, have you ever seen sort of uh, medieval texts where the monks do it? Like the monks are reading it, but they put in like little doodles. It's like 700 year old, like margin doodling anyway that was just a side side thing anyway um and the other one i got so far like this is just the two that have come is this little thing about haworth graveyard um i think this is where the brontes are buried um in england and this one i don't think i like as much i think it's too dense but it's really good for me because unfortunately <laughs> it sort of emulates what i don't want to do and i feel like that's also important um I think for me it's more like a book than a zine it's more basically like it's too much and i've read a couple of things like it's sort of people that are buried in that graveyard not just the brontes but like people and it's got me thinking oh i wonder if somebody's already done this for um the kate cemetery in cardiff because it is massive and it's victorian a lot of people in there are really interesting um and i know that there is like a kate cemetery like friends of kate cemetery there's like a society so i wonder if they've already done that i might try to find it if not maybe I could do one because that would be really good but I've read a couple things in here and that is really interesting but it's a bit too much it's too dense it's not really what I was looking for like a bunch of tiny texts do you know what I mean um and a lot of it is sort of extra stuff you know it's like oh that's really interesting and then loads of boring stuff and then oh that's really interesting um so that's helpful as well also I feel like I should share it simply because I'm super excited about it I got my abominable book box like a book box subscription thing and it had three books in it that i've literally never heard of oh my god that never happens but they look really good all of them so the first one is a reprieve has anybody heard of this one or read this one know anything about it it sounds like so these people do this sort of escape room type game but it ends up getting a bit too serious like the stakes are too high you know people die whatever like it reminds me a bit of like squid game do you remember that show um okay then this one reluctant immortals seems a bit silly like it's got a quote from stephen graham jones but i feel like it's um I don't know, like quite lighthearted despite being a horror about vampires. Because it's sort of um, Lucy Weston and Bertha Mason. They're the two sort of um, women. One is in Dracula and one is the crazy woman in Jane Eyre. In like the, in the house, like locked away, like Mr. Rochester's house. So they're apparently vampires. Um, and they're being chased by Dracula and Rochester. Like Rochester's now a vampire as well. Um, it's a harrowing gothic tale of love, betrayal and coercion. Like is it a vampire romance probably am i against that like also no <laughs> okay next one like they usually do like one newish one or two newish ones and then like an old one that they found in like some sort of you know uh thrift store or whatever so i've also got this one which is james herbert moon um and i think this one is about some sort of monster some sort of like creepy beast who's killing people and like doing horrendous like torturing and stuff like that and for some reason this guy's like tapped into his mind like when he dreams he can see through the monster's eyes and now the monster knows that he can do that and he's after him brilliant such a good mail day such a good mail day y'all i got another one and it's my favorite one okay it's called so you've bought a hundred rolls of washi tape, now what? Which completely speaks to me. It's just a gazillion things you can do with washi tape, right? But the way it's put together, it's like color, you know, but not really intense color, just like splashes of color on each page. And also look how it's put together. Like, I don't know if you can see this wizardry. This is a black magic. I want to do that. So you like... Do like a page, you cut it in half, and then those become your pages like that. Can you see? Oh, 
this world of zines, I tell you, is brilliant. Oh my god. Look at this bad boy. Upon arriving home, I'd been horrified to discover that my nether regions were frost nipped as well. And while the ears and cheeks were already healing, the todger wasn't. My penis was a matter of public record, and indeed some public curiosity. These are mine. These ones are mine. No, oh. it's already past Halloween. So? Girl, it's not a past Halloween. It's just early for next Halloween. No, I just sort of... Playing for some too hard. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have finished Spare, right? And I have a lot of thoughts. But, like, I think I liked it. I think I really liked it. Like, okay, so I've been in the pub now for, like, a bit of time while I'm on to bed in tennis. So I've been drinking. Um, so maybe I feel, like, a giddiness I wouldn't otherwise feel. But people have been slagging this book off hard so hard and i feel like <clears throat> like where is that coming from like this book isn't that bad it's not bad um i enjoyed it i'm gonna give it four stars like i know that he didn't write it fully right he's in the book and sort of just in life in general he's always been like i am not bookish <laughs> like my education is not great because i am not a person who sits well in a room and like learns in this traditional way like I'm not schooly so for him to write a whole sort of memoir on his own I think would be a stretch for him just his personality and things that he's good at and bad at so he had a ghostwriter and I think the ghostwriter was really good he was a really good writer I fully enjoyed the writing that was in that and in the audiobook Prince Harry he reads it out himself and I can fully understand and fully like accept that his input into that you know was like 90 percent, i think because you know it it reads like he speaks you know in like interviews and sort of stuff like that and i enjoyed it i'm gonna go with the four stars i feel as well like loads of people hate these guys like megan and harry now people hate them hate them hate them or just like love them to fuck and i don't think that's me in any way like i don't know them <laughs> they're random people i don't know so i don't feel like i can really say oh i love them or i hate them but i've always sort of had i think a mild liking for prince harry i feel like way more so for him than for the rest of his family like i mean except for diana obviously because i love her um but prince harry diana the queen love them the rest of them i don't really connect i think with them so much and I could really take them or leave them, I think. And it's always been like that. And I think, like, I've always sort of thought, oh, why is that, blah, blah, blah. Because I don't know them, obviously. But I think with this book now, I've sort of nailed it down. Why it is that I like Prince Harry and why I really liked this book. And I think, like, my personality and things that I connect with most in other people's personalities um is how genuine they are as people like how honest and how open and how i don't know real they are do you know what i mean so i feel like i tend to n not more easily than other people but i think i tend to see through fronts quite easily as like a gift and a curse i think people who sort of put forward a sort of vision of themselves or a person that's not their true self all the way I think I tend to react to that quite strongly and I really dislike it and it really sets me against a person they could be the best of people but if they're not showing their true self the majority of the time I think I just react really badly to it. People who are disingenuous or like even mildly disingenuous, like I hate it. And, you know, on the flip side, people who are really genuine and real, they could really be awful people. So I mean, like, 
I could be terrible people. If they like come by it honestly, I feel like I have like a warmer sense toward them than I would do towards someone who was a nicer person but was really sort of, I don't know, put up like a fake front all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like it's hard to sort of like, like say what I'm like thinking. Um, However, like with this book and just in general, I've always had this feeling of Prince Harry that he's a bit sort of, I don't know, like childlike. That's an awful thing to say about someone, especially because he's older than me and he's like a full grown ass man and intelligent and whatever. But I feel like he's so open and honest um, and maybe a bit like impressionable. Do you know what I mean? In like a childlike way. I don't know. Um, and from that, I feel like I've connected really well with him. Like, I really like him. He's one of, like, my favourite of these sort of royal sort of people. Um, and in the book, it really comes across that. Like, he has been really honest about not just, like, the good things about his life and the bad things about his life, but, you know, his family, like, his embarrassments, his struggles. Like, he's just been really honest. And it's made me, like, see, I think, the rest of his family and the whole situation differently as well like I've never really been for Prince William so much but now I see him like I don't I don't love him obviously I don't know him so there's that <laughs> but like, I like Camilla that's a no for me you know what I mean King Charles also a big fat no like anyway also weirdly Meghan Markle so loads of people like hate her and I wouldn't say I hate her because she seems to be perfectly nice and like she's just trying to live her life like calm down but I think she's like an actor obviously and the kind of actor who I think is always acting and some people just are like that like everything they say and everything they do they can't stop acting because it's so ingrained in them to constantly be doing that and I think because she's sort of of this personality type that's constantly acting I get like a fake front vibe off her in what like like I said before like it makes me like feel a negativity toward a person when I feel like that's the sort of thing that's there I feel like things she says for whatever reason whatever sort of vibe I'm getting off her isn't fully genuine do you know what I mean um but with Harry sort of like talking in this book about her and how much he loves her and being so honest about why he loves her and everything he loves about her it sort of makes me as well want to love her. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's that genuine as a person. But also, it's heartbreaking, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Because I think this book for him was probably a huge mistake. He's on about, like, interviews. He's like, I think forgiveness is possible and I want to make up with my family. I want them to just see my point of view and to understand it so that we can be together. And in his book, his family is really important to him. He says the whole time that he wants to be a husband and he wants to be a father and he wants to be an uncle and he wants to be, you know, with his cousins, his cousin huge, you know, his favorite cousin, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think this book was supposed to be like a sort of expunging of all bad things so that they could be together. But in reality, he's just basically set a bomb off inside his family, hasn't he? Like, no one's going to be friends after this all the shit he said, like, about his brother, like, being jealous of him all the time, even though he's the heir, you know, um, and sort of about him, like, fighting him physically because his wife is rude, you know, and all this short shit, and his dad, um, being, like, repressed, you know what I mean? Uh, like, he's, he's said too much truth in a family that's so hideously closed up to where they even say in their manifesto for things that their whole point is to close down and not let information out in order to not affect the magic of royalty or whatever he's let off a huge bomb and I think now there's no going back there's no forgiveness now he's just accidentally I think completely accidentally cut himself off from the one thing that means the most to him and it's heartbreaking I think um but anyway I loved it. <laughs> Maybe five stars. Like, I'm not gonna go with five stars because it's just a celebrity memoir. It's, like, trashy and whatever, but, um... No, you know what? I am. I am gonna go with five stars. Like, I hate myself for loving it so much, but I loved it. And I just, like, blew through it. Like, the audiobook. 
I blew through it and it's made me think about so many different things and him like talking about his penis like probably unnecessary but enjoyable 100 <laughs> percent like oh my god and he's just so like honest and like quite lovable as a guy um anyway that's that okay so this video is officially long as fook so i'm just gonna kill it off here um as far as the project is concerned um made great advances in the zine scene department um Advances in the library book department, not as much, only the two, um, but it's only been a week, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stress about it too much. I've still got over a week left in January to sort out my library book situation. Um, anyway, if you have any thoughts, anything at all, uh, about books I've read, books I haven't read, um, things I did this week, literally any thoughts, please lay them on me. I feed on this for my January. I need... I need your thoughts to get me through every day in January. Um, and I will see you next week, maybe? Or maybe now, just end of Jam, like roughly 29th, 30th January. Just one from there to update the final bits of the January project. Okay, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.